work upon it. All right, let's go to the class without wasting time. What is DNA replication? Some of the questions they might ask you is uh, about what is DNA replication? When you talk about DNA replication, uh, basically you are talking about DNA, um, DNA making identical, identical copies, uh, copies of itself. So if, for example, I have one, 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 yes, I will have the new DNA, which is one, 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 one. For example, that's it. So making identical, if this strand and this strand, or this DNA and this DNA, DNA A and DNA B must be the same. How does it become the same? We saw that we use the basis, whereby A goes with the T, and then C goes with the G. And then we saw that, uh, for example, um, uh, if you find T, then automatically that is DNA, while if you find U, that is RNA. So we are not going to talk about this. So let's go to the uh, examination, um, our booklet, and then we see exactly what is going to happen. What is DNA replication? When you talk about what is DNA replication, what is DNA replication? DNA replication is the process by which DNA makes. You see this thing is in different color, which means that it's a marking point. If you don't add this in the answer, then you won't be able to get the, the answer correctly. DNA makes identical copy of itself or exactly copy, copies of itself. Yes. When does it occur? It occurs, this DNA replication only occurs during uh, cell division. When does it, when, when, when does it occur in actual sense? We are looking at during interphase or before the cell divides. So we shall say that DNA replication occurs before the cell divides, before cell division or during interphase. If you don't talk about interface or before the cell divides, you won't get a mark because that's what you are looking for. Where does it occur? It occurs in the nucleus. Look at this critically. It occurs in the nucleus. This is what you are looking for. If you don't have it, you won't be able to get that mark. It occurs in the nucleus. You have to be specific to whatever you are talking about. Please don't write too much. We're not about too much. We are about the facts. And the facts in this booklet, they are indicated by the different color, not in black, which is a marking point. All right. Um, why does it occur? Why should we have DNA replication? DNA replication, we have DNA replication. Why? So that we double the chromosome number we double the chromosome number. This word double, doubling the chromosome number is very important. We double the chromosome number. Why? The reason why DNA replication occurs, look, uh, you have a cell. You have cell A, and then now, uh, this cell A has two chromosomes. For example, now, this cell, mm -mm, let me just do it like this. Um, you have cell A, yes, before the cell uh, uh, divides, it has this DNA. This DNA is supposed to split into two during the cell division, whereby this cell is going to have this cell and also is going to have this cell during uh, cell division. But now, if this DNA is not uh, divided into two, it means that one cell, for example, cell A, will have the DNA, while cell B will have no DNA. So, what does the cell do? It makes this DNA to be doubled. You see? So that's the, the function of DNA replication. So that when the cell is dividing, it can have, uh, each cell can have an uh, equal number of genetic material. For example, now, if it was like this, so when it divides, yes, during the second phase, this part, you see, it splits. Whereby, let me just do like this. Mm. 
uh, this part, this part, I'm gonna use a different color so that you see exactly. So it's gonna split like this, eh? whereby this chromosome will go to this cell, while this chromosome is gonna go to that cell or that part of the chromosome chromatin. So now, in case this DNA did not replicate, how will this going to get these 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 uh, chromatids? Once they reach the cell, they become the chromosome. That's why we shall say that DNA replication occurs. Why? To double the chromosome number so that during the uh, the cell division, equal uh, chromosomes can go to each what each cell. So basically, uh, results in the formation of identical cells. Yes, that's what we are talking about here. That so that A and B they can have equal number of genetic material. All right, let's continue to. Thank you, Sefiso Zulu. Uh, let's go to the next uh, question. How does it occur? When you talk about how does DNA replication occurs, it, they're asking you the process of DNA replication. Guys, don't go to the paper without knowing this. Because when you go to the paper without knowing that, it means that you are just feeling yourself. There is no way, I repeat, there is no way you're going to go to the paper without the following equation one must come dna replication uh, transcription translation the structure of dna so when you know that you go when you know those four uh, short answer questions so because if you don't go there you're going to bring one so if you don't do it then you will be able to you won't be able to get those six marks so guys please don't ask for scope the scope is always there yes we always even do predictions before we you, you write the paper, and then you almost find 99.999% 99, 99 of, of what you have predicted. So um, just keep yourself on front. You, you'll be able to get distinctions. All right, let's continue, guys. How does it occur? But DNA is a double helix. I explain this. People confuse what is double helix and what is double stranded. Those are two different things. When you say it's double helix, you know it's helico, helicopter, helicopter, helicopter. You know that song, ne? Well, if you're a kid, all right. So it's, it's, this one is helico, you see? Also, this one is also helico. So it becomes double. So we shall say that this is double helix. What about now? When you say it's double stranded, we are looking at uh, this. You see, it's, it's strand one, strand two, strand two, strand one. So the DNA is double stranded, meaning that it has two strands. The double helix and double stranded, they are two different things. So if you mix them, you are lost. Yes. So they are not supposed to be, um, you are not supposed to, make them to be to mean the same double helix that's double helix this is double stranded so basically step number one dna double helix if you look at it here dna double helix if you look at it here yes if you look at it here ne, you'll find out that this if you look at it there you'll find out that this is double helix when it is double helix it 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 unwinds it means that it uncoils. Don't say uncoils in the paper. You know what? The, students, you have a problem. When you tell someone, don't say this, that's what he, what he says. Yes. Although, um, sorry. Although, uh, here I said um, unwinding. Unwinding in the actual sense means uncoiling. Don't say uncoiling. It's like you have the hair on the, on the, on the head. You know, you ladies, you know, they are coiled. Before you remove them, you uncoil them. That's the meaning in science. We shall say that unwinds. Now, when it unwinds, in actual sense, after unwinding, the weak hydrogen bonds will break. 
in science, we shall say that it has unzipped. DNA double helix unwind, weak hydrogen bonds break. So in that, th that actual sense, when these bonds, when these bonds, these bonds break, let me zoom it out and then you see it clearly. Yes. Ne? When these bonds ne, break, I think now you can see clear. Yes, when these bonds break, when these bonds break, then you are able to see exactly what happened. You see? So these bonds, they will break. When they break, we have bonds in there. In science, we shall say that it has unzipped. You understand? Weak hydrogen bonds break. Remember, these bases are being uh, connected with uh, three bonds there, with the two bonds there, with three bonds there, with the two bonds there, with three bonds there. You see? So those bonds, they break. When they break, what happens? When they break, we shall say that it has unzipped. Uh -huh. Step number three, what happens? Yes. Step number three, after unzipping, Yes, now you form you form uh, two strands, and these strands are separate. You see, you form those two strands. Yes, look at them. You have strand number one, and you have strand number two. So this strand, you see this strand, yes. And then this strand. Those strands are the one which we call templates. In science, we call them templates. In English, we call them mirrors. Don't call them mirrors. Please don't call them mirrors because you're not in English. This is not English. When you look into the mirror, you see yourself. So in science, we shall say it forms templates. When you form, when you look into the mirror, you see an image. You don't see exactly the same because when you close the left, it closes the right. That's why we shall say that for formation of a complementary strand, the strand is complementary. When you say complementary, it is the left and right. You understand? Left and right. So it forms a complementary strand whereby, uh -huh, now you tell us that whereby adenine will pair with thymine and guanine will pair with cytosine. That's exactly what happens in there. You understand? Then, well, if adenine pairs with, um, adenine, goes, adenine goes with thymine and guanine goes with cytosine, where are these nitrogenous bases come from? Where are these nucleotides coming from? They come from the nucleo, nucleoplasm. So we shall say that um, to form a complementary strand using three floating DNA nucleotide. Why do we should use DNA nucleotide? Because we are forming DNA. If you are so forming RNA, then it will have been using three floating RNA nucleotide. That is transcription. But here, because we are using DNA, you use using free floating DNA nucleotide from the nucleoplasm. Hey guys, am I clear? Am I, do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Using free floating DNA nucleotide from the nucleoplasm. Uh -huh. So, meaning that now, a complementary strand, yes, let me zoom it out so that you see clearly, a complementary strand, a complementary strand, this strand, which is complementary to this old one, is formed. You understand? So, now, you form, now, two new DNAs. Oh, look. You form this DNA number one, and you form DNA number two. So two new DNA is, are formed, whereby, look at this critically, guys. Let me clear it up so that you see it. Whereby, these two new DNA, they're identical. I'm going to show you how are they identical. Each with one original strand, look at this. 
Teach with look. Not just grammar. Just look and then understand. If you don't understand, let me know in the comment section. Yes. Teach with one original strand. And yes. One new strand. I see. It has a new strand there. And then it has uh, an original strand. I see. Yes. It forms two new DNA, each with each with one original strand and one new strand. So you have a new strand there, then you have an original strand there. These two DNA are genetically identical, and this process is controlled by the enzyme. Let me show you how these two new DNA are genetically identical. So you have DNA here. I'm going to say... You have that DNA and you have that DNA. Let me say A, C, G. See, I'm not going to, to make it too long. A goes with G and then C goes with G. And then C goes with G. Isn't it? Yeah. So that is the first DNA. Now I want to see that the two new, new DNA, which are formerly, are identical to each other and they are identical to the original DNA. So basically, we see that the first DNA had A, B, C, G, and then G, C, G. So that is the first DNA. Now, when they come to pair up, here I'm going to have, let me just use a different color so that uh, we are clear. So A goes with T, and then C goes with G, and then C goes with G. And then what about here? A goes with G. C goes with A. C goes with G. And then uh, C goes with G. You talk about something else, you are writing something else. Imagine. C goes with G. And then C, G goes with C. So, so basically, now let's compare. The first, this is now the new DNA from that side so this forms dna1 and then this one is another dna from that side so this is dna number two now let's compare let's see if they are identical to each other all right i have a here i have a here on the other side i have c here i have c here i have c here i have c here so those strands are the same what about the second strand mm -hmm. I have T this side, I have T this side, I have G this side, uh, I have G this side, I have G this side, and G this side. You see that this and this are the same. What about the original DNA? Let's find out. I have mm -hmm, A here and T, I have A and T, I have C and G, I have C and G, I have C and G have C and G. You see that the original DNA is exactly the same as the new DNA. What about this? I have A here, I have A here, I have T here, I have T here, I have C here, I have C here, I have G here, I have G here, I have C here, I have C here, I have G here, I have G here. It means that the two new DNA which are formed, they are genetically identical that's what it means so you have to know to know that concept yes so now what do we write in exam so basically what we write in exam we say being a double helix unwind good it unwinds when it unwinds double helix the word dna double helix don't say dna helix nope we we'll give you a zero. DNA double helix, we give you a mark. And one, we give you a mark. Weak hydrogen bonds break. The same thing as saying unzip. We we'll give you a mark. Don't say hydrogen bonds break. We say weak. To form two, listen, I repeat. To form two separate, listen, I repeat for the third time or second time. 
to form two separate strands. Don't say to form two strands. Mm -mm. We don't give him up. This word separate is crucial. To form two separate strands. Now, because we're on DNA, we have seen that uh, each is acting as a template. This is acting as a template. Also, this is acting as a template. So we shall say, to form two separate strands, each is act this word, each. If you have not used the word each, you can use the word both. Both are acting as a template. Both are acting as a template. For formation of a complementary strand, for formation of a complementary strand, using, okay, using free floating DNA nucleotides. That's a key point. Where? Where are they best from? In the nucleoplasm. Free DNA nucleotide. From the nucleoplasm. Free DNA nucleotides are the ones which are being used. So those are that's the key point in this regard. Uh -huh. A complementary strand is formed whereby complementary strand is a marking point. Whereby adenine pairs with the thymine and the guanine pairs with cytosine. Who new check? Who new DNA are formed? Which are genetically identical. They are formed, they are genetically identical. I've explained to you how are they genetically identical. We, ha we have seen that before and after the things are the same. And the two new DNA which have formed, they are genetically identical. They are the same. Don't say that they are identical. Mm -mm. They are genetically identical because we are talking about in terms of genes. Something can be identical, but it's not genetically identical. Identical twins, they're not genetically identical. They, they, they have some variations in their genetics. But we call them identical twins. So if you just say that they are, which are identical, you are killing yourself. You are not the distinction material yet. Say, which are genetically identical. Yes. With one original strand each, with one original strand and one new. We have explained this. How is each with one original strand and how is each with one new strand? And this process is controlled by the enzyme. We don't talk about those enzymes. When you continue with your studies, you know the polymerases which are there, the helicases which are there, the ligases which are there. There are so many the primases which are there. We don't talk about those enzymes. If you're using a book and it has those enzymes, please don't waste your time. No one is going to ask you about those enzymes. And if you write them, you won't get a mark. What you're looking for, this process is controlled by the enzymes. Is enough. Why do you waste your time? You must not waste your time. So basically, that is the process of DNA replication. You understand? So we see that DNA double helix unwinds weak hydrogen bonds break. We say that the word weak must be there. It breaks. And then when you say weak hydrogen bonds break, the word unzip is the same as weak hydrogen bonds break. Each, uh, to form two separate strands, the word separate is a key point. Uh, each or both are acting as a template using three DNA nucleotide. Those are, that's the key point. So using free floating DNA nucleotide from the nucleoplasm, the word free and DNA nucleotides are the key points in there. For formation of a complementary strand, complementary strand, understand? Yes. Uh, whereby adenine pairs with thymine and guanine pairs with uh, cytosine. So the two new DNA are genetically high, sorry, the two new DNA are genetically identical. We say that, don't say they are identical because genetically identical and identical is not the same. That's why the key point is on genetically identical. Genetically identical. If you miss out genetically and you just say identical, you might cross it. And don't ask why. Just follow the 
because I've explained it. Each with one original strand and one new strand, we have explained it here that each is one original strand and one new strand. And then we are saying that the process is controlled by the enzyme. The process is controlled by the enzyme. Yes. And we say that don't bother yourself talking about the enzymes. Sometimes the enzymes even you don't know. You understand? Yes. Sometimes, yeah. You know, some people, they just want to make their life difficult too, but by, by making the, yeah. Me, I know. Me, I know. I know, I know too much. So I want to have to write these complicated things. Mm -hmm. You complicate yourself. Don't complicate your life, man. All right. Let's go to some of the questions. So basically, that's DNA replication. Uh, we have some questions um, which we, we're going to see. But these questions are more especially on protein synthesis because that is our next topic. And we're going to cover it tomorrow. Tomorrow, guys. Tomorrow, don't miss the class uh, for protein synthesis. And we're going to talk about the questions. Yes. If you have a question, please let me know uh, so that we are able to help you out. Download the distinction material uh, so that it can help you to get a distinction. Yes. Um, let's just see one, two questions. We shall see these questions tomorrow. Yes, because they are about protein synthesis. But before we go to that one, let's just talk about this question. Where are you? I think I didn't add it there. Ne? Yes. Uh, I didn't add it there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to stop here. So uh, we will do some questions uh, tomorrow once everything is done. But uh, before I go to... Uh, to 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 the end of the class, uh, guys, remind me what is DNA replication? DNA replication is the process by which DNA makes identical copies of itself. When does it occur? It occurs when. When you say when, what are they? They're talking about when does it occur? It occurs before the cell divides or during interphase. Remember, interphase is not phase of meiosis. We shall see that when you go to meiosis. It's not phase of meiosis, no. It's just a growth phase. We shall see. it. So, why does it occur to double the chromosome number? Where does it occur? It occurs in the nucleus. How does it occur? It occurs, you explain how does it occur by explaining DNA replication. Explain DNA replication. Then you'll be able to, to understand how does it occur. So these questions, guys, make sure that before you go to the paper, you answer these questions. DNA replication doesn't have many questions. You just have to know these questions I listed here. Then you'll be able to understand and the answer all the questions concerning about DNA replication. What are the building blocks of DNA? Remind me, we say that they are nucleotides. What are the monomers of DNA? They are nucleotides. You understand? What are the units of the nucleotides? Yes, sometimes they can ask you that question. What are the units of nucleotide? Remember, nucleotide is, it looks like that. Eh? Looks like that. What are the units of nucleotides? It's a phosphate group, is a sugar, and the nitrogenous base. So nitrogenous base, those, so these are the units of the nucleotide. If they ask you what are the units of DNA nucleotide, then you talk about the phosphate sugar, a deoxyribose sugar. In this case, you talk about a D deoxyribose. Yes, you are talking about deoxyribose. In deoxyribose. Because the oxyribose, you are talking about DNA, the oxyribose, sugar. And then um, the, another question they can ask you, uh, then nitrogenous base. In this case, you talk about adenine, thymine, guanine, and the cytosine, if they are talking about DNA. Guys, I think I'm clear. There's a student who asked me a question. Let me check here. Um, ask me a question. Uh, Uh, 
Uh, I can't see the question. Let me check. Uh, 